Hello and welcome back to Sean and Belize. Today I'm in the Mayan village of San Felipe in the Toledo district of Belize and I'm at Ishka Cow Chocolate. It's a Mayan Belizean chocolate factory uh, with a small family. Today we're going to get a chocolate making demonstration starting with the planning to picking the beans um, shelling the beans roasting the fermentation process all the way up to tasting and an amazing meal and a tour of their factory so enjoy the ride and remember to subscribe the tour begins outside on the grounds of Ishka Cow Chocolate where Henry shows us the different plants grown in the area especially the cacao. Enjoy this opening introduction from Henry as he explains the name and a little bit of the Mayan language. A pronoun. The pronoun is a H. And he expels it as in Ah Pukulkan. You said your name was? Shane. Ah Shane. Ah Sean. Ish. Your name? Grace. Ish Grace. Ish Haley. Ish Haley. So Ish in the first part of this name would represent her cacao. Or if we were to overgeneralize cacao, we would simply be saying her chocolate. Not to get it confused, however, Ish cacao represents a goddess for happiness, joy, fertility, as well as the popular fruit called cacao. Now let us read Ish. Right up on the top of Ish, I-X, represents the face of a lady. That symbol, the lady has a headdress, which would indicate that she is, of course, indeed a female. So now let us remove that. We're left with cacao. C-A would be pronounced or spelt in English K-A. And we pronounce it Ka. Let's say it together. Ka. And Ka would also come along or be paired with a gesture. And the gesture would be our. C-A, ha, our. And it is represented by a comb-like looking symbol. The comb-like looking symbol is just a cross-section diagram of those two hands forming the gesture our. C-A-O would be traditionally spelt if we were spelling in English K-A-W-A and pronounce Ka-Wa Let's say it together Ka-Wa ka And Ka-Wa would also be paired with a gesture of pointing towards the heavens However, the symbol represents the face of a god and so we conclude, cacao is actually the phrase, my God, or the popular teenager quote, OMG. <laughs> so indeed, we pair this final term as in a goddess of cacao. However, we also question which God are we talking about? When Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist, was given the task of giving the tree its scientific title, he later titled it, Theobroma cacao. Now we're influencing Greek with Maya. Theo, Broma, food slash god, are most commonly known as food of the gods. We're coming back to God, and I don't know who we're talking about. Are we talking about a person, or are we talking about nature itself? When we go back to ancient times, within the evolution of human beings for domestication of plant life, after the constant migration leading them into hot tropical regions would have led to the finding of such sacred plant. That plant would actually represent some sort of a god. The god would later require your strength, your sweat, all of the sacrifices would then eventually yield products such as harvest that you would consume to help continue your survival. But in of course, documents would indicate that cacao's byproduct, which is a hot beverage, was mainly consumed by the elite groups at the time. 
So indeed, today we might represent elite groups or nature itself. Considering those two theories, we'd often conclude that you too today will be consuming great concentrations of the byproduct, would reference you as elites and royal guests. Thank you for joining us. Using it a part of her study. And I'm going to be using this knife, which is technically non-traditional. Uh, we were not using any steel technology. We would simply take a stick, use it as a hammer to break it open. The activity could be close to something you would do for the month of October, carving into a pumpkin, or maybe you enjoy watermelons. Cutting into one could be similar as well. I'm going to make a small little cut right around it, then one in the center to create a more beautiful cross-section diagram okay do not do this at home okay <laughs> you then risk losing a finger okay now if you have not seen the inside of a cacao fruit before what do you expect to find in it what do you think I imagine it would be almost like a pumpkin where it's like a kind of thicker layer and maybe some like cold like a pumpkin, a thicker layer, and a pulp. I've seen it, so... You've seen it? <laughs> yeah. You yeah, have seen, seen it? it? Okay. <laughs> Let's pretend we have not seen it. <laughs> and our expectations, of course, is not chocolate. But it is the raw components that would eventually yield your chocolate. And voila. Close to what you expected, there are some stringy bits. And there is a collection of seeds within it. Now the reason why we cut it this way is so that you could have a better look at it and maybe you could use that to describe what it looks like. What does it look like now? Yeah, now there's a large group of seeds. Large group of seeds? It looks like corn almost. Corn? Yeah, that's a good way. Now because we mentioned sugars, this would have also been the first source or a candy store growing up as toddlers. And I will take this time to self-experiment by placing this bean in my tasting station. Mmm. I'm only doing this for you, you know. <laughs> I've done it already. It's sweet, sort of slimy. The flavors combine like mango, pineapple, sour sup, with a hint of uh, Oh, what do you call that one? Green Apple Jolly Rancher. Oh, maybe, but it's all up to you. I would like for you to take a bean. And uh, disclaimer, I am not biting into the bean. I am simply savoring and indulging on the white coating. What do we do when we're done? When we're done, we're then going to taste what raw cacao really tastes like. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh my god. Grace already. What does it taste like? Grace? It tastes like fruit. That's really interesting. It's really good. The texture is going to gross me out. What surprises me is why wouldn't they just stop there? Because it tastes so good. That's strange. I think it's important that, that we did not stop there good. because now we yeah. could celebrate with some alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right. Like Go ahead, don't worry, don't be shy. You could <laughs> slip it in. It's like a candy. <laughs> yeah. After learning about and tasting the raw cacao beans, we moved on to the ancient Mayan hot chocolate drink. Taste it with different spices. Remember your uh, your two meters, your tolerance, and your expectation box. We're gonna start off with the first one, which has a concentration of 99% Criollo cacao. With we then sampled numerous chocolate products made here at this cacao, including an alcohol given off in the fermentation process. Then we tried our hand at shelling the beans and then separating the remaining shells from the nibs. Really? Yeah, really. That's in the west of here. And there's your bean, no shell. Ah, there you go. 
Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we learned about the traditional tools used for grinding the coffee beans and got to try using them ourselves. After the tastings and demonstrations, it's lunchtime. Turmeric and coconut milk. Um, this one is pumpkin cooked in anato seed. Um, the last one is our habanero hexa. So Henry, this is a family recipe only found here, right? We are. We do share the recipes. Oh, okay. So, but this is your mom's family recipe. Or? Yes. She had. Um, she designed it for a few years before we officially started producing it as a, as a cuisine at the So although chocolate's like incorporated in the sauce, it doesn't have, it's not a candy taste. It's, it's delicious. It's like a gravy. It would Definitely not be worth checking uh, out. defined as a Maya dish. It okay. would be more of a Elysium mix cuisine. Because it was created so much later. Okay. Final step of the tour. The gift shop. After that amazing lunch, we received a tour of their working factory and then headed to the gift shop where you can buy some of their amazing chocolate products. I took this tour with Taste Belize out of Placentia. There will be a link to Taste Belize in the description of this video. Be sure to check them out if you're in the area. It's definitely worth it.